Hi guys, Ms. O'Connell here. So in case you are struggling with the calculations, I'm going to show you one round of collecting data and analyzing it. Okay, so we have an astronaut and we have a jet propulsion pack that applies a force to increase the astronaut's velocity from zero to some value. So when we click, right, when we, we can increase or decrease the force of the extinguisher, we can decrease or increase the mass of the astronaut. When we click activate, that jet propulsion will begin acting, applying a force. We want to shut that force off before we reach the photo gates so that we're able to accurately measure some final velocity. So in your table, you want to record the force, the mass, the force time, aka the time in which the extinguisher was firing in that table. Okay, so I have 175 newtons. Fifty-five kilograms. And the first time is six thousand one hundred and seventy two milliseconds. Okay, we need that in seconds. So to go from milliseconds to seconds, we're going to move that decimal place over three times. So I have 6.172 seconds. Okay, next step is we need to find the change in the velocity of our astronaut Wally. What we know is that the distance between these photo gates here, delta x, is 10 meters. That's what the simulation tells us right down below. Okay, the time is 0 0.501 seconds. So point five. Zero one seconds. During this portion of the astronaut's path, Wally no longer has the force being applied to him. Therefore, in the absence of an external force, the velocity will remain constant, so Wally would move in a straight line forever until another outside force acts on him. He is in outer space, so there is no force of gravity from Earth acting on him. He is floating in space. So because we know that the velocity here is constant, because of Newton's first law, we can find the final velocity, as long as it's constant, by taking delta x and dividing it by the change in time, delta t. So we'll have 10 meters divided by 0 0.501 seconds. And we get 19.96 meters per second is this final velocity. Okay, so you can now calculate change in velocity. We know that before the fire extinguisher acts, right, his initial velocity would be zero. So to find delta V, we take that final velocity, we subtract zero, 
So delta V is going to be 19.96 meters per second. Okay, to find the impulse, right, you're going to take that force applied by the fire extinguisher or the jet propulsion extinguisher in this case. And you're going to multiply it by the amount of time that that force acted on the astronaut to increase his velocity from zero to 19.96. So you'll multiply those two values to find the impulse. To find your momentum, right, you're simply going to take Wally's mass and multiply by the change in velocity, which we determined right, is 19.6. So we'll take m times delta v. Okay, to see some kind of trend in our data, you're going to continually change the force applied to Wally and the mass of Wally over a few different trials. Okay, if you have any questions, I'm available for Google Hangout. Okay, just let me know. Have a great rest of your day, guys.